The Creation of Dr. Aaron Bright Chapter 1 Athasagoraphobia On a starless night at sight redacted, Aaron Bright is awakened by a loud, insistent beeping of their alarm clock. Noticing it is 8 p.m., Aaron begrudgingly pulls herself up and out of bed. She trudges to her closet, gets herself dressed in her uniform, and grabs her level 4 clearance key card. Guess it's gonna be another shitty day with 035 again. She says with a yawn as she steps out of her cell, left open for her as she embarks on the day's task. Uh, oh, hey, Bright. A person from the wayside asked, with only exhaustion to back it up. The individual was one of the doctors. He was about half white and half Mexican in their descent. Their wavy orange hair that trailed down their back like thin winding vines had caused him to stand out a little more than the others, but was strange to no one. You know, Dr. Idler, you're supposed to refer to me as Dr. Aaron, right? Uh, uh, oh, s sorry, Dr. Aaron. Dr. Ryler stuttered nervously. Hey, just be glad. I'm not like the other level fours. Try to remember to call me that next time. She warned Dr. Ryler casually, since the same mistake could be made with a few of the other level fours. Dr. Ryler was not one of the level four personnel, but he did work as level three. Close enough, maybe. Dr. Ryder repositioned her stance so that it would be more comfortable to continue a lengthier conversation with the other in front of her. So I'm assuming there's a reason you're in front of my door? Uh, oh, if, if I may. Dr. Ryder paused as though he had several things to speak about, but instead he left a stack of papers in front of Dr. Bright for her to take. Aaron looks confused confusedly at the papers, but grabs the documents out of Dr. Ryder's hands as though they had been through this routine before. The papers appeared to be from the O5 Council. Dr. Bright's eyes begin to widen in shock as she skims through the contents. Why on earth did they want me to watch the D-Class personnel go into SCP-579's containment cell, especially through a glass shield and observation deck? It's an anti-meme. We can never know what it looks like or what it does to D-Class after we leave the observation deck. Also, why on earth did they give me a copy of SB963? We all know it doesn't work like the original. Aaron exclaimed angrily, as though someone had just allowed her to be used like a free-for-all punching bag and left out their own stupid steam. Um, it, it, it's what they want, nervously said Dr. Rattler. Sorry, shouldn't have yelled. Aaron didn't sigh. <sighs> Guess I'll have to deal with this shit. See you later, Dr. Rattler. See you later, Dr. Or Aaron. Aaron Bright then proceeds to head down to deep containment, finally arriving at SCP-579's containment cell. She then approaches the two guards in the D-Class. So, this is the D-Class going into SCP-579's containment cell? As she said, looking at a depressed, disheveled, young white man in an orange jumpsuit. The guard on the left spoke. Yes, ma'am. This is the decos we'll be using today. <sighs> Alright, let's get this over with. Send them in when, we, when I get to the observation deck. Yes, ma'am. The guards responded. Aaron proceeds to the observation deck and reaches to the observation deck. Control panel. She opens the cell doors and uses the microphone to tell the guards to send in the D-Class. Aaron presses the cell button and the cell doors close. Alright, D-Class. Do you see anything? No response comes through for 10 minutes. D-9873456. Do you or do you not see anything? Before she could finish, the observation glass shattered. Alarms were activated, along with high-pitched screaming coming from the observation deck. Both guards ran up to the observation deck with their guns in hand, but as soon as they got up there, all they found was a lifeless corpse of Dr. Aaron Bright. 
and a copy of SCP-963 wrapped around her wrist. Though for some reason, the ruby gem looked pitch black instead of bright red as it was before. The left guard took the amulet to be taken to be studied, and the second guard called for backup. Backup eventually arrived. SCP-579 is believed to have returned to the containment cell. The body of Dr. Aaron Bright has been cremated. In an interrogation room not far away from SCP-579, Agent Redacted, one of the seven agents that works in SCP-579, Order D Class 27582356 to put on SCP 963 3. The pale Irish and Polish lady picked up the amulet and placed it on himself. What, what the hell? Where am I? And who the hell are you? The agent doesn't seem surprised by this and says, I am Agent Redacted, and you are at the SCP Foundation. I know you must be shocked right now, but please bear with everything I have to say and take a seat in the chair in front of you. Yeah, I, 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 uh, okay, I, I, I will listen. As I say while sitting in the chair, the agent then leans forward to the D class to speak. Three days ago, you were killed in, when a breach of SCP 579 occurred. We aren't sure why this happened and why it attacked you. If you don't mind me asking, do you know who you are? The shriveled lady spoke while falling out of her chair. No, no I, I don't. Why don't I know? The agent says, calm down. You're okay now. There's nothing to worry about. The agent finally gets her to, to calm down. I do believe you to be Dr. Aaron Bright. Seeing as they're the only ones who are holding SCP-963-3. A somewhat calm lady asks, What, what is SCP-963-3? It is the necklace you're wearing. That said, that is all the time we have for now. I'm going to have to leave you in the hands of your only doctor friend. Who, who are they? You'll find out when you leave the room. The agent helps the lady off the floor and leads them to the exit of the interrogation room. The agent opens the door. A tired and worried doctor was sitting in the chair next to the exit. All right, Aaron, this person here is your friend, Dr. Rattler. They are going to, to try and help you with your memories. Dr. Rattler gets up and says immediately, Please come with me. I promise to help you as out as best as I can. Aaron slowly follows them, unsure whether to go with them. Both Dr. Ryler and Aaron arrive inside a containment cell that housed a pepper tree. Dr. Ryler says, Please wait here. I'm going to go to my pepper tree and pick some of the peppers off to help your memory. Excuse me? Why would a pepper tree help me? I don't see how it could help me at all anyway. Oh, right. You don't remember anything about my tree or the peppers. To put it simply, I had a pepper tree seed that grew from my hair. After a while, I gave in and gave it to the foundation for an experiment with. It finally grew into a big tree after a while and produced peppers with special effects. I'm sorry, a seed in your hair? And special effects? Well, like you, I am anomalous. As for the peppers, they gave cognitive, cognitive effects such as helping with memory loss. I, I, I think I'll just sit down and try to process this. I promise it will help, and I'll be right back. Aaron just sits down trying to contemplate what Dr. Rowler just told them. Dr. Rowler heads over to their pepper tree and picks three fresh peppers to give to Aaron. They then head back to find, their t find her twiddling with the grass near her. Here, take one of these. They should help you get some memories back. You, you sure this is going to work? I, I feel like something bad is going to happen if I use this. You can trust me. These will really help you become better and remember what you've lost. If you say so. All you have to do is use the peppers is to... Essentially, she takes one of the pe peppers and bites into it. 
Aaron then immediately starts begins starts to clench in at her head and starts crying. Aaron, what's wrong? Don't tell me you ate it. All of Aaron Bright's horrible and painful memories came flooding into her mind. Memories such as what Caesar 110 Montauk is. What happens to D class at the end of the month? Multiple deaths of people she knew killed by SCPs. And many, many other dreadful memories. This place is an absolute hell and a death trap. She yelled out before collapsing. The guards were rushed in and removed the collapsed body to another room. Aaron, I'm so sorry. Aaron awakens in another room with the TV. Someone then speaks on the microphone. I know you've been through a lot recently, but I do believe SCP-2030 can help you deal with what happened to you earlier. She got up and yelled, Why the hell should I do this, you devils? The voice comes on the speakers again and says, If you don't do it, we have ways of making you do it. As if that scares me. Do whatever you want, you massive shitty assholes. I'm not doing anything you say. She said with pure anger. A door opens to the left of the room, and two fully armored guards enter the room as the door shut. Without saying a word, they started restraining Aaron to a chair in the room. The hell off of me, you bastard eye pieces of shit! Said angrily by a restrained Bright. Their guards ignore her and picked up the VHS tape. The one that picked up the VHS tape placed it into the VCR and headed to the door with the other guard. Before the VCR started playing the episode, both guards left the room. I told you we have ways of making you watch this. Should have done as you were told. Don't rot in hell, you asshole. Before Aaron could speak anymore, the episode had started playing. The weird motion of characters appear on the screen and do horrific things that no one should have to go through. Suddenly, a very tall, laughing person in a suit comes on screen, telling everyone to laugh. What the fuck is this shit you're having me watch? Before anyone could answer her, all lights went out, then back on. Aaron was sitting on a, uh, on a stage with this tall, blue-suited person right in front of them. 